So I'm hoping that in the coming years we're going to be issuing tens of thousands of DOC blockchain credentials. What I wanted to do when I started Seven Mile, Nick, was to start a not-for-profit that would work with the people in our community. Uh, and our community, our region of Sydney, is about 270,000 people. Uh, it's about a $17 billion annual GDP economy here, so it's quite a sizable chunk of Sydney. And we wanted to help people who were wanting or needing to start a business and didn't really quite know how to get started. They didn't really know whether they had a good idea, how they could understand whether the idea had a market, whether they were uh, solving a problem that you know people wanted solved. In early 2020, I was approached by our state education agency who came to see me and said, hey, we've heard that you're doing great work with innovation and entrepreneurship and we, we think we could use your help because we need to redesign how we help our high school students develop innovation and entrepreneurship skills. And uh, so... That started a whole process and uh, really since early 2020, despite COVID and various lockdowns and things, we've been working very successfully with the education agency, working with high school students of around uh, 15 to 17 years of age. The challenge that we had and that I was very conscious of is that we were, I knew we were going to be running these programs that would be expanding potentially quite dramatically. I didn't want to be issuing paper-based credentials. I mean, I just think the concept of issuing, in the 21st century, issuing a paper-based credential is almost meaningless. Uh, and of course, paper-based credentials get lost, they get misplaced. Uh, so what's, you know, I mean, I, I just, I knew that we had to be able to do better for the students who participated in our programs. And I, and I knew I wanted to give the students not just a good learning experience, but I wanted to give them a credential that they could carry with them for their whole life. And the only way to do that was on a blockchain-based credential. I've had three boys who've grown up and they've gone through high school and college and, you know, they've got their own lives now. But, but I reflected a lot on the fact that, you know, as they went through life, they were developing skills for various reasons in school and in part-time work and various other activities and none of those skills were ever tracked or recorded in any meaningful way for them to be able to use so i mean i've got a a, a very broad interest in in particularly what you're doing and the ability to enable young people to track the skills they develop through their life from a probably potentially of quite young age uh, and carry with them for their for their whole career, their whole working life. Younger people, certainly the uh, cohorts that we work with, the 15, 16, 17 year olds, uh, they're very conscious of the fact that they they want to own their data and they want to control it and they want to control who has access to it and they want to control the ability to make those credentials available to, to specific people. As we've started to issue these blockchain based credentials and we've educated our, our students, our learners, on what they are and how they can use them, they are now excited on the basis that they, unlike perhaps many of their peers, are going to be presenting a blockchain credential to people who they might be applying to to work for or to applying to a college so that, that blockchain credential actually sets them apart. And uh, what I've recognized and I've seen now is that the kind of the light has gone on for them, that they are different and special because they have a blockchain credential. When I reached out uh, to sort of, ha you know, have an initial conversation, what was wonderful was that I was, you know, I had a response from the person who was running a blockchain credentialing system and uh, I think you know immediately I mean I certainly felt very comfortable that I was talking to someone who knew what they were doing and and was like-minded. 
we we don't have uh, developer resources of any kind. So I think I probably very early on kind of made that. I, I fessed up that that was the case uh, because I thought I don't. I, you know, I certainly don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. Uh, if you thought that we had developer people, we didn't, uh, but we still wanted to access the functionality and that's what you've made available to us, which is just fantastic. It's been an absolute pleasure and you have always been so responsive to any questions or issues or assistance that we've sought. And it's an absolute pleasure to work with you and with Doc. We trained the t t uh, teachers from 10 schools in March uh, then in May, June, those teachers delivered the program. It actually worked brilliantly. Uh, the teachers did a fabulous job. We obviously supported them. And so there's now a great deal of confidence to uh, progress now. Uh, in early 2023, we're going to train 100 teachers from 50 high schools. And uh, what, the, what the State Education Agency wants to do is by 2024, they want all 1,500 high schools in our state to be able to access the program, which means a pretty rapid growth. And if 1,500 high schools uh, each running the program every year and training 30 to 50 students, then it's, it's the numbers are pretty big, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, which is exciting, daunting, but you know, basically exciting. And that's just in our one state, uh, New South Wales, the state of New South Wales in Australia, there's about 8 million residents, about 1,500 high schools. So I'm hoping that in the coming years, we're going to be issuing tens of thousands of DOC blockchain credentials.